Uh, considering a good amount of hyped games releasing for consoles come with their own form of TAAU, what exactly were we waiting on FSR 2.0 for? Um, I think, we, well, there is that, but we were, we're still waiting for Microsoft's machine learning upscaling solution, uh, which has been in development for a long time. Uh, at some point, we'll need to check in with Microsoft to see whether that is actually still an active uh, area of research for them. Um, I think the thing to bear in mind with FSR 2 and Epic's TSR, Temple Super Resolution, is that these are kind of like a generation beyond TAAU. Yeah. They're doing mm-hmm. more. They're ba- they're basically able to get better results from lower resolutions. They're able to produce better results often than native resolution rendering uh, in select scenarios. Um, I don't think it's either of those solutions have quite matched up to DLSS just yet. No. But they do seem to have a sweet spot when outputting to a 4K resolution from a lower internal base resolution. And uh, Oliver, you you saw this on Scorn, I believe. Yeah, I've seen actually quite a few FSR2 titles um, this year. I think Scorn was the first one that we confirmed the use of FSR2, which I basically did by looking at the PC version and doing various tests, including disocclusion tests and looking at artifacting on transparencies. And that was a little bit of a more conservative upscale. So you had it going from basically uh, what seemed like a lock 1440p to 4K. So not a super aggressive upscale. But we've seen later in the year uh, with Forspoken, the Forspoken demo, which does seem to be using FSR2 as well. And that is working from some much more aggressive resolutions. Um, I Basically, like the performance mode, it's averaging like 900p. In the ray tracing mode, it's averaging about 1000p or so. And that actually does a pretty good job of bringing that to a 4K resolve from a normal viewing distance on a large television. It is reasonably 4K-like, like you can definitely see reconstruction issues, but it's very good considering the uh, (laughs) relatively low internal resolution. And I think that's really the big takeaway from FSR2 and uh, TSR relative to TAAU or checkerboarding is basically that four times resolution scale, that 50% scale on each axis. Getting a decent resolve out of that requires the reuse of a lot of different frame, frame data and getting a good resolve without an enormous amount of temporal artifacts is very difficult, right? So that's really where those techniques come in. Yeah, I think uh, CDPR also added it to their games. Cyberpunk and Witcher 3 have it. Uh, I think the the main reason that TSR and FSR2 are useful for console developers is uh, for those teams that weren't planning to develop their own solution. Like, I wouldn't see Insomniac, for instance, abandoning what they've done, because I think it's very good, and it probably will be improved, but most studios aren't going to be crafting their own upsampling methods, right? So just having, these are additional tools in the toolbox, so to speak. TSR will be native, I guess, to Unreal Engine 5, and I suspect we're going to see a lot of that. And then FSR2 is useful in many other instances as well. So I think it's also the key to unlocking more ray tracing performance from these machines uh, by keeping the internal resolution much lower. I mean, yes, it has a cost, of course, but it's still much less expensive than trying to hit those higher pixel counts, especially with ray tracing. Yeah, we saw on the performance RT modes in the Insomniac games that it, that it works. Uh, you can it run does. at lower resolutions and um, still get a good looking output. 